Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Joe Burrow, the Titan killer, doing it again. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, quick reminder, we have revamped the Quarterback School Patreon community. It has never been cheaper. It has never been easier or more streamlined of a process for you to get even more Quarterback School content. So if you love the Quarterback School content on YouTube, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Get over there, support the channel. I sincerely appreciate the support. I think you'll really dig the content too. Lots of in-depth, deep dives, detailed nuance about the quarterback position, high-level football. Fired up for you to become a member. Get over there, check it out. The link is in the description. As for this one, let's get it going. The Titan Killer, bottom of the screen, seam. Simply magical touch. Love this. Nice read. Beautiful ball in here. Watch 37 get to the middle of the field. Right down the seam. Big chunk play. Lot to like. Now I will say, normally, when you read this thing out, if we're reading some iteration of four verticals, and that's what we'll call this, especially from a condensed formation. Now I think they run speed out up top here, so it makes it a little bit different because this corner can then kind of feather in here. But usually you would want to read this off the middle field player, so away from rotation. So if we rotate this way, theoretically, you'd want to come over here because this guy has farther to go to get to that seam area. No, that's not what they do here. This time he comes down here and the middle field player is rotating from over here. Now it really doesn't matter when the guy just is going to lose his mind and get to the middle of the field no matter what. But you can see here, you know, some of these rules when you say, hey, break it, always read it like this. There's almost never always. Because you can see that seam up top because the corner isn't threatened with two verticals. He's on that seam. As opposed to down here, 37, getting to the middle of the field. Just a beautiful ball. And then the touch to get it over the second layer. I think that's my favorite part about this throw. Because 51 is getting decent depth. The ball here. Up on his face. I mean, that, that's a thing of beauty, right? Right on him. Chunk. Love it. All right, so the next one here, second and six. Up top is the drop on a curl. Can't catch it for him. This thing is perfect. Flat defender runs out of there. Wide receiver just trying to get vertical too quickly. And in reality, this is second and six. They get They don't convert the third down, and this ends up being a field goal. So who knows if they would have scored a touchdown. I like to think of this as a you know, couple point differential drop here. When I'm talking flat curl here, up top, just a nice simple curl. Boop, boop. Another thing to pay attention to here, especially when you've got someone run into the flat, so some iteration of flat curl, you usually want to read that flat defender. Normally, they'll slow this thing through the curl, let you throw the flat, rally up and make a tackle. Right here, they make it easy. He just steamrolls out of there. You know this thing's going to be there right behind it. Nice job from Joe Burrow. Can't catch it for him. Thing of beauty, quarterback-wise, though. Boom. Again, look at that flat defender. Run out with the motion, clean it up. Thank you very much. Everything but the catch. Footwork-wise, again, Joe Burrow, one of the most consistent, no-wasted movement. Lined up, hitch, perfect base, rip it. Next one, second and 19. We got a speed out up top. Get half back. One, two, three, no hitch, rip. Ball's up on his face, on the sideline, wide side throw. For a guy who probably isn't known across the league as having the strongest arm in the world, I think he has a stronger arm than most people think. I've seen him throw in person. Dude's got some revolutions to his ball. He can rip it. This though, this is not an easy throw, especially on second and long. Because everybody knows you're trying to get half back. So speed out here. He's already outside the numbers. Just with the split here. So normally a split, in my opinion, if you're going to throw an outbreaking route to the field, would usually be the top of the numbers. It's just a two-yard difference, but it matters when you're catching the ball on the sideline. right? So wide split, wide throw, three no-hitch speed out to the field. Not an easy throw. Very nice job from Joe Burrow. Play this thing out. When does he throw it at the back of his drop? Separates right there. Look at the wide receiver up top. Not out of his break. Capital A anticipation. Accuracy. Arm strength. Love it. The full bag. 
from the back here, you can really see the footwork, his ability to put his cleats in the ground, be lined up to the right. Boom. That back foot, right? Always looking at that back foot. All his cleats in the ground. Balanced, in rhythm, sequence, fluid. Love it. Next one here, first and 10. Ball's on the eight. Getting the ball to the back. Now 47, the safety loses his mind. And this is about as easy of a chunk as you'll ever get. But really nice job from Burrow. Just get it down. Give it to your playmakers. Let them make a play. 47 in space might not be his thing. That's easy, huh? Love it. And sometimes you need some of those, especially on the road, backed up, big chunk like this. It's a big play. Now, back in the day, we used to call this check M. Who knows what the hell they call this? But check M for me was one of my favorite checkdowns. I always think of Philip Rivers and Darren Sproul, Sprolzy. Being able to come up, and then it's not really like a like a true swing or wide where you're really trying to stretch this thing. It really does look like a little bit of an M. So you just kind of come in here and go boop, boop, and you're really getting downhill. So you get to catch it a little bit more downhillish. I should actually see if I have a couple of images of that put in here. Really nice check down though. Put it on him. Poor 47, exposed in space, big chunk. We're out from the shadow of our goalpost. Really just a backbreaker because it's so easy. Whoop. Great throw. Big chunk. We are rolling. Next one, third and 12. This is a big play. We're going to scramble to the right. Nothing's there. A little scramble throw to the back. This has got a chance to score. Now, I can't really tell from the all 22. It's probably a combination of both. But a better ball and a better catch, receiver maybe, in 32, this thing's a touchdown. You be the judge. Does he need to fall here? I mean, that's not an easy catch. I'll give him that. I don't know how tall the guy is, but he doesn't look like a, he's playing in the NBA anytime soon. But let's keep our feet. Ah, ah, ah. Either way, it's a nice chunk. Third and 12. Any third and 12 conversion is going to be nice. It could have been a touchdown, in my opinion, with a better ball. And if he stays on his feet, again, watch it out from this wide angle. So he's the backup top. He's going to chip the edge. Nothing there, downfield, scramble to your right, nice vision. I mean, a perfect ball he scores, right? He walks in, no collision. Just a little high, and that's the difference between a big conversion and a touchdown. Either way, nice job from Joe Burrow being able to create out of structure. Not there. He's got a little scramble to him. Nice run earlier. Nice job right here getting outside the pocket. Big play, third and twelve. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. Then again, the Quarterback School Patreon community. You know about it. Get over there. Check it out. The link is in the description. Never been cheaper. There's never been more content available. I sincerely appreciate the support. In addition, we've got quarterback school courses. We've got a bunch of free resources. All of those things can be found in the video description as well. As for this video, let's keep it going. Next one, third and nine. This one deep out up top. Now, in my opinion, this is probably a hitch late. Okay, it's still a strong arm throw, big boy throw. You see him rip a number of throws deep down the field outside the numbers. But this is five step and two hitches. So I think when we watch this thing again, let's just imagine he throws it on the first hitch. So big boy deep out, what, 15 yard deep out. Now we're at the top of our drop, hitch, throw. So that to me is when the ball needs to be thrown. It doesn't need to be thrown, right? He still converts it. So, you know, as much as I need it to happen, it doesn't matter. But I think if it's perfect timing, like capital A anticipation that we talk about on this channel, and the fact that he can certainly do it, because why? Because this corner has got what? His rear facing the sideline. We want anything we want outbreaking here. Flat out, comeback, hinge. We've got all those routes. Right here, I think if you if he's being really critical about his footwork, he just takes one hitch too many. I'll play this thing out. We can see the hitches at the back. One hitch, hitch, just that second hitch. And he takes an unnecessary hit. And all those hits add up. So again, I think he I think he's certainly good enough to play with more anticipation. Now it doesn't matter right here because he's got a strong enough arm. I think he could also be just a 
tick better lined up to his left so he doesn't have to take that extra hitch. See how he's kind of lined up down the hash? His back foot looks like it's lined up, but his front hip is closed. So he has to get there, right there. You see the difference? So back hitch, back of the drop. First hitch, look at his feet, slowly getting there. Second hitch, lined up. So if you can get that lined up right here at the back of his drop, I think he can play that thing faster. It's a lot of quarterback footwork mechanics. You're welcome. Next one, third and five. I love this play. Bottom of the screen, watch the slot receiver. Fake the wheel, back under the slant. Now, it's made more difficult because the Titans have an edge player dropping off into the lane. Big dog, 9-9. Nine, nine. But this is beautifully schemed up. So I've seen this play run down in the goal line before. I'm trying to think who it is. Maybe Devontae Adams and the Packers. But you catch double press here, you're going to get some iteration of rubs. Okay, they know they're going to get picked. Something here. So right here, we're going to come in here, set this pick, set this rub. The DB type's coming with us, so really it's two. The wide receiver who gets the ball is going to come out like he's going to get this wheel up the sideline, but we're not giving it to him. His guy is going to bubble over the top. Once he bubbles over the top and the first wide receiver and the corner down here are out of here, well then now he's got to navigate how the hell am I going to get back because my guy put his foot in the ground and he's running essentially a slant or an under. So just beautiful, world-class design. And then again, because the defensive lineman drops out, it's a little bit tougher of a throw because that thing would be wide-ass open. Look at the slot defender. He doesn't know who's who in the zoo. Love it. That's a beautiful third and five conversion. That's awesome offensive architecture play design. Nice job from Joe Burrow too. Big conversion. Love it. Next one, first and ten, start of the fourth. Big play action deep out up top versus a cloud defender. Again, showing off the arm strength, y'all. I think a lot of people coming out, probably myself included, didn't think he had the strongest arm in the world. I think his arm's gotten stronger in the league. That's a big boy throw. And again, the accuracy of it. It's not just in the vicinity. That is a strike, right? We talk about up on someone's face. There it is. On the sideline, wide side, deep out over a cloud defender. So again, you know, it's one thing to be able to just rip a deep out. It's another to be able to come out here and have to navigate this corner with really no nothing in the flat. I think the back maybe play fakes and then tries to get into the flat, but there's no true like, you know, when I think of like more smash where you're really trying to get a high low, there's the high, and then you've got something immediately flashing out here to this guy where this corner would kind of settle his feet and you could put it over him. This has really got to be a perfect throw. The play action element of it maybe does that with a cloud force defender. But again, that's a beautiful throw. It really is a great throw because it shows off the accuracy and the arm strength. Down the field, once he let this thing go, you know, a tick of anticipation too inside the numbers. But the accuracy, just a dime on the sideline. Super impressive. Love the arm strength. Again, just throwing a full catalog of throws in this game. Next one here, third and 13. Let the back shoulder fest start up top. Third and 13, no problem. Back shoulder, great catch as well. I think I say this every Joe Burrow video I do because there inevitably are a number of back shoulders, I feel like. But is he the best to ever do this? I mean, he might be. I'm trying to think of other guys that I would put in the same realm, maybe like Drew Brees. But when you go to throw these, you always got to pause it at the top. So he separates right there. Look at the wide receiver. What is he, three yards down the line of scrimmage? Five yards max? The thing to look for when you throw these back shoulders, and I'll just keep it these colors because these are these guys, Titan blue, and then the receiver is not past him. So he's kind of like behind him in a hip position. If he's even, you can still throw it. If the receiver is past him, then you want that ball to be a little bit more of the drop it out of a helicopter right down his line type throw. So it's all about this decision when you go to throw it. If he's behind him or hit behind him, you just throw it right at his ear. And he's able to kind of fall back and make this play if they're good enough. And seemingly every Bengal receiver is. And it helps when your quarterback is putting it in a really nice spot. But that is a great catch. 
And this is not a one-off thing. This is what Joe Burrow does seemingly every week. And that back shoulder cannot be stopped. Next one, touchdown pass. Not quite the same velocity on this one. This one's a little bit more fadey of a back shoulder. But again, back, nice job from the wide receiver, bodying him up, the new Ocho. Love it. Again, I'm not a huge fan of play fakes to throw deep balls outside the numbers. But right here, really nice job. Again, Joe Burrow giving his guy a shot. Let's see, pause this thing at the back, see exactly where he is. Check the footwork out, play action shuffle. Great base. He's separated right there. See how the wide receiver is not past the corner? Again, this is back shoulder school here. There's the corner. Here's the wide receiver. That's a back shoulder. Now this one's a little bit more, when I say fady, I mean not line drive, more kind of like arc to it. But again, it's slowing him down, giving his guy a shot to come make a play. So much to like. Get off me. Love it. Again, the other thing with Joe Burrow for me is just always his footwork, his consistency, his lack of wasted movement. You see how just efficient he is with this thing. Quick flash fake. All his cleats in the ground. No heel click. No wasted movement. Consistent stroke. Love it. Touchdown. Last one here. Second and 10. Another back shoulder fade up top. I mean, at this point, we're just doing work. Find the one-on-one. -on -one. This time you could make the argument potentially that he could have put that thing down his line. I don't think the wide receiver really helped him by getting so tight to the sideline. But again, just doing work. One-on-one, -on -one, outside the numbers, you get a chance for a back shoulder, and I don't think there's ever been anybody better. So pause it at the top here. When's he go to throw right there? Again, look at the, when he's throwing it, look at the placement of the corner and the wide receiver up top. It's three for three, right? It's the same placement every time. He's over the top. The wide receiver is behind him in his hip, back shoulder. Again, if he was past him or you felt like he was running by somebody with flat feet, you put that thing down, drop it out of a helicopter. Right here, he's behind him, back shoulder placement. It's one thing to be able to see it. It's another to be able to, be able to put it right where you want, up on the dude's face, you know, 20 plus yards down the field consistently every time it feels like three hitch out dot great game so that is a wrap joe burrow week 12 taking down the tennessee titans again damn uh joe burrow one of my favorite guys to watch play i think he's probably i could be talk myself into it the best back shoulder thrower i've ever seen i don't think that's the first time i've said this on the channel he puts on an absolute clinic at the end of this one with three great back shoulders but it's not just that i think it's fun to see joe burrow kind of bring everything with his game to the next level so to me he looks like his arm might be stronger than it's ever been meaning he's driving the ball down the field in tighter windows maybe not on perfect anticipation or footwork maybe a tick late with a hitch here or there but he still got the arm strength to do it to the wide side outside the numbers still able to see him scramble around a little bit with his feet whether it's creating outside the structure of the play as well probably left some yards out there as well whether it was drops or kind of errant passes or guys falling so still so much fun to see big big win on the road fun to see the Bengals come into their own a little bit without all their weapons there when they get everybody back that offense is going to be that offense it's going to be fun to see thrive here at the end of the season so thank you so much for hanging to the end I will see you next time have a good one